So what is this thing then? Well, this is something I've been working on for a few months now. It's a multifunction SD card device for the Commodore 64 based on an Arduino. There's a standard clone Arduino in there, one of the cheap ones off eBay. And we've got in the back here an SD card. A USB port on the side there for upgrades and other uh, things. And a couple of buttons and LEDs on the front for uh, operating and feedback. And this connects to the Commodore 64 using the standard cassette connector. So since it connects to the standard tape port, as you'd expect, you can operate it using the standard kernel load routine. So let's just have a look at what we can do with it. So it's telling me to press play on tape, so I'm now going to hit this green button here. And it's found the boot loader. This yellow light here, it looks a bit orange on screen, but the yellow light here tells me that the Commodore 64 has paused the motor. And it's continuing to load now. Blue LED is telling me that there's activity to the SD card. And the green is power. And the number that we just had there uh, counting up is a percentage counter. So now that that's loaded, we get to this screen. And it's given us three options. PRG, TAP, and ZID. So these are just the standard file selections that the Commodore 64 supports. For example, if I hit F5, it's showing me a list of the SID files that it's found on that memory card. And using the keys, I can scroll through and select one of these. So let's try this one. That's Monty on the run. Progress indicator there. And you can play the SID file instead of loading the game. Space will play the next tune. And background again. And then if we hit run stop, it brings us back here. And we can select another tune or we can select something else. So what else can we do with it? Well, let's have a look at F3, tap. So it's now showing me the tap files that the device has found on the SD card. So if I select a tap file, it's now going to reboot, take me back to the press play on tape, and the device is going to load the tape file that I selected. This is using the standard kernel loader. The Commodore thinks it's running from a cassette right now. And as you can see there, we've got to the found screen. The Commodore 64 has paused the cassette. And it will wait for the 10 second timeout, or if I hit the key, oh, there we are, beat me to it. And the game is loading just like it would be loading from tape. But that's not all we can do with it. Let's have a look what else. Let's try F1 for PRG. These are the standard PRG files that you would get on a Commodore 64 floppy disk. And you can go through and choose one of these. So if I wanted to try, let's try NZ Land, which is New Zealand story. It's now loading that directly into RAM, even though it's all going through the cassette ports. A few weeks ago I was lucky enough to meet David Pleasance and got the opportunity to show him this device. David Pleasance, as you probably know, is the former managing director of Commodore here in the UK and it was great to meet him and spend the day with him and I also managed to get him to sign my Amiga 500 while I was at it. And the game runs. And if that wasn't good enough, We've also got on the back of the device here another connector. A 
And that connector just happens to fit one of these in there. So on this 90 minute cassette that I've got here is a very important piece of software that I wrote in the 80s. And at the moment I'm limited to loading it in from cassette. However, by connecting this cassette player to the back of the device in that extra port and connecting the device by USB to the PC, I can use a little bit of software here to capture this. So we're going to try that now. So it's telling me it sets hardware to record mode and press play onto it. So So that's the software the device is in record mode. And then it's asking me to press play onto it. And I'm gonna hit OK. And I'm also gonna load it on the Commodore 64 at the same time. And as we can see there, the software is now capturing data from the cassette. And that's it, the end of the tape, the end of the program. So I can stop the capture now. So that was my important software. So it's detected the tape name there as well, Hello World 80s. So now that I've done that, I've got a file called 80s Software New, using software like the Vice Emulator. I should be able to attach this. And load it up. There we go. But that's not all we can do. So in addition to being able to capture data from the cassette to the PC into a tape file, we can also do the opposite. Since the device sends the data in a series of pulses to the Commodore 64, it can also send an inverted version of the same data to the cassette player. So let's just try this now. I'm going to hit record. I'm saying nothing's happened yet because the Commodore 64 is preventing it from running, but once I've selected the file, Okay, so I'm not going to record the whole tape. It's up after 20% now, so I'm going to stop that. But I'm going to try it, load it back, see what we've got. See, the machines are actually that sensitive to the loading time that as soon as I hit reset on the device there, the machine reset itself because it stopped receiving the correct signal.
Okay, so let's try loading from the cassette this time. This one's actually loading from the tape, not from the device, there's no activity going on there. And it should get a few to like 172 I think on the counter, then it should reset because I stopped the tape. Okay, bizarre. Ah, there we go. So there we go, a multifunction Commodore 64 SD card device that can it can load tape files, PRG files, SID files. It can output tape files back to cassettes, and it can also capture cassette data into a tape file using USB to PC.